All right guys, it's RV tip day today. And even though it's raining out, miserable, we are getting some of the uh, tropical storm coming through Florida. And I was out here working on the RV and figured, hey, let me go get the GoPro and at least show them what I'm doing and try to squeeze in a video for you guys. And maybe a how-to or help you out you may already know this stuff, so I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Let me go over a couple things. First of all, I was going over the systems in the RV like I normally do, and found out that I had a furnace issue. And even though down in Florida, we don't too often have to use our furnace, but I like everything working, and uh, which brings me to, we might be bring you guys along we're planning on a trip hopefully a uh, little road trip probably working our way up to south dakota and maybe around i i don't know i don't know where all we're going but we are going on a trip and we're going to bring you guys hopefully you're all going to watch and uh and uh maybe we'll have some fun along the way but to get back to this situation here this is going to be a furnace issue and what had happened is, is I came out here and turned on the furnace from the thermostat, nothing. Now, nothing can be a lot of nothing. You know, nothing could be the fan kicks on, but it don't ignite. Uh, the fan kicks on for a little while, it ignites and it shuts off. There's a lot of different issues that it can be with your uh, furnace. But with mine, if this has ever happened to anybody out there, which I haven't found too much of this issue online for some reason nobody was really thorough about it i'm not going to be too thorough about it but i'm just going to give you uh, a quick overview of what i've done and <clears throat> what had happened is is i wasn't getting a clicking i was getting a, i wasn't getting a fan motor nothing there was absolutely it was dead even though i was getting the numbers on the thermostat i wasn't getting anything coming out or blowing on the furnace so Basically, the first thing that I did is, is I went ahead and checked to see if I had 12 volt down here, okay, which I did. I checked it all out for 12 volt. I am getting 12 volt to the furnace. Uh, secondly, what I did is, is I took the two wires that uh, run down here to uh, the system from the thermostat. Now, mine's only a two wire. Yours might be more than that. But I have the two wires to the thermostat running down to the system here. And I crossed them two wires, which basically uh, hot wired the fan motor to come on, which it did. The fan motor did come in as soon as I took the two blue wires on the thermostat and crossed them together into one, and it came on. Now, <clears throat> I'm thinking that I have a thermostat issue also. It's an intermittent problem with the thermostat. So I think I'm going to change that thermostat out anyhow. I don't really care for, for it too much. I really can't see it. Don't light up or anything. It's hard for me in the location it's at to even look at. It. I have to turn the light on to look at it. Okay, uh, let me go in here, guys, real quick. And get, as you can see right here, I took it apart already. But uh, this is the little light I have underneath it. Um, and this is what it looks like. Okay. As you can see... I got the furnace on right now, nothing. So, um, I, I think I'm going to switch this out anyhow. I still think I have a little bit of an issue with this. But let me go on outside again. I got the manuals out and all. Um, <clears throat> basically, what I did is, is I checked this board out. And these boards, I have an Atwood 8531. With an on-off switch, basically it's called a reset off switch, but once you switch this, you have no 12 volt coming through here. And, you know, as if you don't already know, shut off your propane. Do not have your propane on when you're working on this stuff. And, you know, shut off your electric also when you're messing around with this. You don't want to short anything out. Uh, but basically, I start with the most obvious first, maintenance. I will go through this whole thing, making sure my wires are good, there's no corrosion no loose wires i will also blow out this area here you can actually take this off fairly easy also it's just held by a wing nut right there and you do not have to take this wing nut all the way off 
as you can see, if I loosen this up real quick, just loosen it. Okay, look, see? This whole thing will come completely out. So you can take your, your air gun, your blower uh, from your compressed air, or even if you don't have a compressor, you know, just use one of them cans with air in them that you can buy at the blue store or whatever, Walmart. Um, so I will go around this whole thing and make sure all that's taken care of. Secondly, I went ahead and checked this board to make sure it wasn't flashing any codes, which basically you will need your power back on for that. Okay, it needs to get 12 volt for that to work. If you look on this board right here, it's got a little red light on it, and it will flash a certain amount of times, and it's giving you a fault code. Now, I don't have them fault codes memorized. I will try to put them in this video, but if I don't, you guys can Google them. Uh, and it will normally, if it's, I, I do know that if it stays on steady, a steady red light, then it's more than likely your board. Okay? Now, I don't have full confidence in them fault lights anyway on this on this particular thing. You could have a couple issues. It could be very well be a board. But when I spoke to Atwood uh, about this certain situation here, I really like another good tip for you guys is is at any time it is possible, call the manufacturer. Don't call the RV place. Don't call the service department. Any of that stuff. You get it right from the horse's mouth when you can, and you're going to get the most. Uh, information and the most accurate information you can get on this and from my understanding when I spoke to Atwood matter of fact today on this situation uh, but what he was explaining to me about the boards are is 75% of the time a little over 75% he said but average 75% of the time when these get sent back to them they're actually good there there's nothing wrong with them so <clears throat> you guys don't want to go out there and spend money on a board and stuff like that for nothing because they are kind of expensive and if you definitely take it to a dealer they're definitely gonna probably double that amount to do it so what I basically did is I didn't have any fault codes right I checked to see if I had 12 volt which I did I want you guys to see this so because this cover goes over this blower okay you see my my off switch right there I have no 12 volt going to this at all okay this goes over the blower and as you can see it's got four screws if i can do this one hand two on each side that 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 it comes off right once you take this off which this is always good i mean for me i wish i would have seen somebody have this but they didn't if you flip this over you see this right here see the switch you hear it okay that's called a sail switch and what that does is is once that's this cover is over this this fan here this is going to blow at a certain rpm to get this switch to to, to 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 switch on you see this okay if your bearings are shot in here or if you have debris or anything like this that is slowing this down it's not going to be enough to hit the switch so you need to look at that. Maintenance is a big deal too, guys. So, you know, just double check everything. As you can see, this is pretty clean. This is uh, not bad at all. I've seen a lot worse. But this is where that sail switch is. This, is, this could be a, a major culprit of why if I'm getting that fan to come on and nothing else is working. So what I did is mine wasn't actually clicking like this until now. Hear it? So I think it was sticking. Now, this is just basically what I started with. I haven't put this back together yet. I haven't tested it yet. I will say that I still think I have an intermittent problem with that thermostat. And I will be changing that here soon because when I went in there to test it, it ended up kicking the fan on without me jumping it. But nothing else came on. So maybe me messing with it or readjusting the wires to the thermostat I don't know but I'm not going to take any chances with it because I'm thinking that I do have a faulty uh, thermostat as well I really don't like that one anyway too much but I'm going to eventually change that but for now guys what I think I'm going to do is is I'm going to put this back together I'm going to get back to you I'm going to put this back together I'm going to test it to see if it fires over and uh, let me get it back together and I'll, I'll cut you back in on this Hey guys, one more tip I have for you. 
you know these screws are a pain in the butt look how small they are okay and normally on my nut driver here I will have an extension on this to make it easier it doesn't really matter because when I put this screw in here the minute I do this it, it'll tip off and fall off okay now some people will use tape some people will use I don't know like a a glue or not a glue but you know what I'm talking about anything sticky to put inside this thing and then hold it here's what I did on this particular thing so let me get it here right here okay guys check this out I'm gonna try to do this let me try to do it like this okay hopefully you guys can see this okay rubber band what I do is I put the screw on there put the rubber band right over the screw just like that and I'm holding it like that see that put it all the way over this back of the nut driver and I'll just take it screw it right in once it catches then I could take it off and it pops right off see I only got it on one end okay <clears throat> and then it'll pop right off but you see the screw is pretty tight it's not gonna fall off you know it's not you're, you're not gonna screw it in there and it's gonna drop off but just a little quick tip there hopefully that helps somebody out um, is I just use a little rubber band on that type of stuff because that will drive me crazy trying to put the screw in here and it keeps dropping it's it's tight enough as it is in these furnace areas and once this falls off it's gonna be real difficult for you unless you have one of them grabbing tools or something like that to get this screw out of here but as you can see works for me so let me get this back on guys and I'll be right back to you and hopefully keep your fingers crossed on this check this out guys No codes. Now I got to put all this stuff back on here now, but I just wanted to test it with me not jumping anything. And hear that sucker run. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, so guys, this may not be your problem, but as long as you're getting 12 volt to this unit could either be a thermostat or I would definitely check if you have a relay could be that but my situation was that sales switch now I'm sure I could have probably prevented that too if I turned my heater on more often down here and, and let it work and that's brings me to just letting you guys know and ending this this video at this point but it's worth it. Go out to your RV. If you have it stored somewhere at least once a month, if not sooner, I'm more of a fanatic when it comes to that, other than this furnace issue. But check everything. Check your oil, check your generator oil, check, run your generator on high load, turn your AC system on, check all your exterior lights, your blinkers, your water pump, your hot water heater. All that stuff also needs maintained. You know, like what I was saying, Explaining about the furnace with the with the leaves and debris and blowing it out every so often from the soot and, and everything else. It is a maintenance deal. And uh, yes, it can happen on the road, but if you could try to prevent any problems while you're out on a road trip or going somewhere, at least you have peace of mind that it is working at least at that point. And when you take off, you're going to be good to go. But as you can see, guys. You seen what I told you right behind this sale switch is what my issue was so I hope this helps somebody like I said I figured I'd just bring a GoPro out here in the rain and uh, seeing that I'm working on this I figured hey maybe it helped somebody else out so all right guys appreciate it take care